All right, time for another episode of the Josh Cast. Uh, there is an elementary school near where I live, and when I record these, sometimes the voice memo just picks up the location and just names the memo after the location. So I'll end up finishing the recording, and it, the title of the recording is, you know, such and such elementary school, which feels very creepy to me. I don't want people seeing that. They're like, why, why are you recording a podcast at a school? That's very creepy. Almost as creepy as the serial killer who has a podcast about doing serial killing. That's how they, if they were to remake Dexter, that's what it would be today. It would be uh, a podcast about a serial killer uh, and the adventures of the serial killer on that podcast. That's, I'm telling you, that's a million dollar idea. That is a million dollar idea. Uh, so this is, I, I'm really trying to quit the sweets and the red meat and all that stuff. Today is day two of that. And I must admit, intestinally speaking, I feel a little bit better. What usually happens though is I will start to feel tired because I use sugar as a stimulant. So we'll see if that fatigue is going to hit. But overall, I do feel a a bit better. Uh, Frustrated with the writing right now. I'm trying to write uh, new material that's... um, (laughs) I'm I'm trying to write material that's not... Uh, explicitly related to depression uh, which is a bit like uh, uh, trying to uh, find a place in Antarctica that doesn't have snow which actually is possible that's a bad metaphor in certain parts of the year there's certain parts of Antarctica that don't have snow But I think you get my drift. I think you catch it. (laughs) What else is happening in the... uh, Part of the purpose of this podcast is I'm I'm also running late. So I will do this podcast because this is a way for me to write. So you are witnessing um, the mother of all first drafts. There's a guy jogging, older gentleman. You can't outrun death. That's what I want to shout out the window. It's inevitable. It's coming. This, by the way, is how I justify not working out. Because I remember my grandfather explicitly saying it's very important that you eat well and exercise. And then I think to myself, yeah, well, he still died. And uh, actually it was a slow, horrible, decaying death. Now that I think about it. Now the counter argument is that it could have been an even more painful death had he not worked out and and, and eaten right. Who can say for sure? Only the fates can say for sure. Only God can say for sure. Only Steve can say for sure, because he works for God in archives, and he reads everything. Now, of course, as I speak this, my intestines are beginning to feel not so good. But even the not so good feels better than what it was feeling like before when I was eating all the hazarai. So hopefully this good feeling will continue. What am I saying? The good feeling will never continue. 
See why I'm finding it so difficult to write non-depression-related material. Although the other thing I'm noticing is that um, so much of what I do on stage is predicated upon panicking. (laughs) And the weird thing is that lately I have not been panicking. I've been kind of standing within myself. And... uh, And people, it, it, I'm not using the same amount of energy that I used. And uh, it seems to be going okay. But it's throwing me a little bit because I'm thinking, ah, oh, should I be more, shouldn't I be more uh, energized here? But then again, if I'm not energized in life, perhaps that would be a lie to be energized on stage. Stand-up comedy is about the truth. Finding the truth. Truth in comedy. But... It's really difficult. The writing at this point. Uh, I find I'm finding I'm in a slog. I'm not really coming up with anything. Uh, I'm not coming up with anything I like, and I seem to be going in circles because I keep trying to write about how I hate flirting. And you know something? Now that I'm really analyzing it, maybe that's not true. This is the problem. I think I have an opinion, and then I just I say, no, maybe that's not how I feel. I do remember a couple of times where I was flirting and I enjoyed the process. So, that isn't, ah, maybe, maybe when a chunk of material doesn't work, it's because it's not true. But I do think the deeper issue here is the fact that there's a part of me that's staying in the depression, that's choosing to be depressed. And it's related to the fact that that professionally I'm not where I'm at, and so I am frustrated and depressed. This thing, this could scare me in a relationship. Um, To be frustrated and depressed, not where I'm at, but then have to be not depressed for the sake of the other person. That concerns me. Even this right now, my fear is, ah, ah, this is boring. No one's going to want to listen to this, but no, my inner voice says, keep talking. Keep opening up. Keep opening up. All right, well, I'll keep opening up. I do, that is a fear that this, you know, feeling of, feeling down is going to continue, not continue, but that no one's going to want to be around it. So my fear is that no one's going to want to be around it, but my hope is that people are going to want to listen to it as a podcast. Well, the podcast, first of all, you can stop and start it. You can skip episodes. And it's only, you know, 20 minutes a day. Whereas with your, when you're with me, that's 24 consecutive hours. Well, I'm paying for it today because I left later. The traffic's worse. Man, this podcast is turning into the kind of conversation I have with Dad in which we talk about nothing. But what I was just talking about, I think, was, dare I say, pretty, pretty profound. Which, that's I'm borrowing from Larry David. Larry David is a genius. That's how he's described. Larry David is a genius. I want to be described as a genius. 
I think I've described it as, yeah, it's, it's good. He's good. He's all right. He's good. He knows, he knows some things. So, uh, yeah, depression. That's something. Had a nice little pregnant pause there. Pregnant pause. Interesting phrase. That phrase created by a man or a woman. I have a feeling it was a man. Only a man could be so casual about a pregnancy. I came up with the phrase pregnant pause. What do you think? I'm in labor, okay? Why are you talking about this when I am in labor, Maurice? Maurice Lepau. It's not the, that's not the name of the guy who came up with it. That is not the name of the guy who came up with it. Had trouble sleeping last night. I turned off the space heater because it was getting too hot and then it got too cold. Because I'm an old Jewish woman. That's what's happening. It was it was too hot, then it was too cold. Then I had to turn it back on again. I need new socks. I wasn't wearing any socks, so I was colder. I get cold when I don't wear socks. All my socks are dirty. I need to get new socks or wash the socks. One of the two. That's got to happen. It is only Tuesday. I'm I'm normally not that guy, but I'm like, ah, oh, I really can't wait for Friday. I really can't wait for Friday. And what will that lead to? Saturday, Sunday, and then another Monday? You're trapped in the prison of your mind. Cartoon villain therapist. That's what I'd like to find. That's what I'd like to look for. I think I almost did a sketch of this one time. Well, I did a sketch where where He-Man was seeing a therapist. But now I want to do a sketch where the, the cartoon villain therapist... The cartoon villain is the therapist. Tell me, how does that make you feel? Well, I came in complaining about depression, but now since you've hooked me up to a, a torture chamber... The torture chamber has eclipsed the feelings of depression. So I've cured you. Excellent. Prepare. Prepare to torture him, Evelyn. It's Evelyn. Well, yes, but if you go by Evelyn, it's... I mean, it's more evil. Yeah, I get the pun, honey. I get it. But I just call me Evelyn. All right, Evelyn. I feel like you were mentally saying Evelyn while calling me Evelyn. Shut up! Well, that was fun. Ian McKellen was the guest star in that sketch. That's an absolute lie. But I feel good about that lie. That is an absolute lie. But I feel good about that lie. A song from West Side Story. I feel pretty. I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty and witty and bright. Dee 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 dee. Dee dee din. Dee 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 din. Dee dee. La 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 la.
And then there's my version of the song. I feel depressed. Is there more to the song? Nope, that's it. Covers everything. What is the source of your depression? A uh, sense of failure, I would say. Not feeling like I uh, am where I want to be in life. And where do you want to be in life? Uh, marginally successful. That's where I want to be. Do you want to be super successful? No, just marginally successful. <laughs> Actually, you know what I want? I want to be able to um, write jokes that I feel good about. That's what I want at this point. And I just don't feel like I'm there. I feel like everything I'm coming up with is is uh, half finished. And not very insightful. That it's just a, you know, a joke about my personal appearance times a thousand, which I feel like is everything in my act right now. Yes, 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 I'm... I have low self-esteem. Yes, yes, yes. I don't like the way I look. Blah, blah, blah. So what? So what, I ask you? Isn't there more to say? Isn't there more that you can discuss? Parent Education Annual Gala. Has anyone ever had fun at a gala? A gala sounds like a party that involves W-9 forms. Gala. Sounds awful. I did come across a picture of me uh, in high school with uh, my my high school jazz choir that I found on I was I was spying on Facebook. I was looking to see other people who graduated high school and see how they were doing. And uh, in short, they all have eight-year-old kids. That's how they're doing which I feel like is the beginning of every single premise I've seen every single comedian in their mid-30s do. All my friends are having kids. Except man-at-arms. His stand-up is different. All of my friends have saved the universe. I've merely assisted in the saving of the universe. I feel like a professional failure. I am man-at-arms. What does my name even mean, man-at-arms? I mean, my real name is Duncan, but everyone calls me man-at-arms, which seems not specific. They may as well just say, hey, you, guy with gun. Are you talking to me? Yes, we're the only one, you're the only one who we call you, hey, you, guy with gun. Yes, I noticed that. You could just call me Duncan. Sure thing, guy with gun. Why am I not more concerned about the coronavirus than I should be? I should be getting the flu shot. I heard last night that if you get the flu shot and they get coronavirus, it won't protect you from coronavirus, but it'll help the doctors rule out the flu so it'll get you treated faster which makes me have a lot of faith in medical science <laughs> will the flu, flu shot will the flu shot save you from the coronavirus no no it won't at all it'll just uh It'll just help the doctor 
get to the point faster where they can say, oh, it, oh, it's definitely coronavirus. Well, there's no hope. It'll get you out of the system faster. And then the other thing, too, that I have to admit this, I'm really ashamed to admit this, but I, I have trouble... You know, I don't want to say I'm an anti-vaxxer because I'm not. I believe in the vaccinations. But whenever I hear, get the flu shot, get the flu shot, I'm always, there's a part of me that's like, you know, how much of this is big pharma? How much of this is propaganda? Oh, I, that reminds me of a dream I had in which... Uh, I was with a group of people, I think it was work people, might have been a few college people, and Donald Trump was there, and they were all making jokes at his his expense, and I kind of walked away from the awkwardness, and then Donald Trump walked up to me, and he was was saying, you know, can't they just, you know, if they want to say something mean, can't they do it in private? Why do they have to do it in public like this? And I just, I tried to have compassion for him. And uh, I felt better about myself. That I was able to rise above politics and rise above my own prejudices and my own uh, concern, I would say, with our current president and just be able to exist with him as one human to another without judgment and just uh, give compassion. So sometimes I guess my, I, I dream these things to massage my ego. I'm not sure. Perhaps I am sure. I'm tired of saying I'm not sure. Why am I tired of saying I'm not sure when I am indeed not sure? I should take pride in being not sure. I believe I am right next to a Ford Escort. The fact that that thing is still going. That car might be older than I am. Well, suddenly I'm quoting Alien Resurrection. That could very well be. That could very well be. That could be a collector's item. It's not going to be a collector's item. My mom thinks her Honda is going to be a collector's item. It is 30 years old. And maybe it will be. I don't, I think there will be, it'll be tough. Because the collector cars... The cars were designed in an era of visual opulence and excess, whereas the Hondas are from an era of, uh, we can't afford fuel. So you look at a, you know, a 50s Cadillac and it says, you know, we are, we're the king of the world. Whereas you look at a Honda, a 1990 Honda, you know, and it says, um, Don't waste all the toothpaste. Use it all. It's expensive. Well, I'm arriving at my destination. We seem to have completed this podcast. Um, Feeling okay about it. Still don't know if it's energized enough for you. But uh, as they say, it is what it is.